Hey guys, welcome back to Atomic Underground Season 1, Episode 17. This is a video showing the restoration on our satellites done by Tyler out in San Francisco. After uh, his portion of the video, I just posted a bunch of pictures and other short videos from the restoration process. Enjoy! Hey guys, my name is Tyler. I am the owner of Claxon Mechanics. We focus on automotive part restoration as well as custom automotive electrical systems. Outside of automotive work, we also do some restoration work on the side. Our latest project is this light fixture from Nix Titan II site. This is a Krauss Heinz explosion proof and vapor proof light fixture. It also protects against physical damage by hitting it. That's why it's heavily reinforced with this cage. Now this light did not look this nice when it was removed from Nick's site, so Nick's site originally. You have to remember when the government decommissioned these sites in the 1980s, they actually blew off the top of the launch, the launch silo and the entry portal. And by doing this, it allowed groundwater to pour in for years and years and decades. And as a result, the launch control center was filled all the way up to, I believe it's level one or three of the launch control center where the crew quarters are. And this is where most of these lights were. As a result, they're completely caked in rust, calcium, grime, just a bunch of nasty corrosion that does not belong in these light fixtures. So how did I restore it? I started off by soaking it in rust remover for a period of about 48 hours. After I soaked it in rust remover, I sandblasted it in my sandblasting cabinet for about half an hour with a black aluminum oxide, which is a very heavy grit of sandblasting media. Here is one of the light fixtures in progress. You can actually see how different it looks from the light fixture up here, just because we got most of that dirt and gunk off. However, from rust over the years, you can actually see the pitting right here from the rust, as well as the natural porosity of cast iron. If you look closely, you'll even see the original casting mark from Krauss Heinz when this was manufactured back in the 1960s. This one actually needs a little bit more sandblasting because there is a little bit more gunk left on it. Now, how do you fix this pitting right here? The way I fixed it on the other light fixtures, I use Bondo. Now, as you can see in this picture, I went a little bit overboard with the Bondo. For this picture, I'm going to use a little bit less. Here are some other parts. This, this is actually the cage from that light fixture. As you can see, it's completely broken. I tried to save it, but it, it's just too far gone. This is actually made out of cast aluminum. Unfortunately, I do not have the equipment to weld aluminum. You need a MIG welder with a spool gun, or you need a TIG welder. I have my Miller MIGmatic 180 here. It's good for welding mild steel, but not so much aluminum. So I actually had to order a new one off eBay, and then I will be installing this on the fixture I sent back to Nick for use on the site. Some other parts, this is the glass globe that came out of that light fixture. As you can see, it's just cloudy and dirty. Like I said, this is calcium. This will come off with white vinegar and baking soda if you scrub it. This one actually broke when I was removing it. As you can see, this part little chipped, this little part chipped off from all the when I tried applying pressure because it was just caked in rust and dirt. It was hard to remove, but luckily I glued it back together and it works fine. Additionally, here's the bulb socket. This bulb socket is what actually lights the bulb up. As you can see, it's nice and clean. How I cleaned it is I removed all the metal parts, I sandblasted them, and I cleaned the ceramic with toilet bowl cleaner because this is actually the same material that toilet bowls use, porcelain or ceramic. Now this, this is actually the original bulb that was in that light fixture that was original from the Air Force days. Out of curiosity, I looked in the bulb to see if the filament was still intact, and it was. But when I was removing it from the light fixture, it actually broke the socket off, so there's no way of actually screwing it back and testing it. So, don't try this at home. I applied 120 volts to the appropriate contacts in here, and to my surprise, it lit up. It only lasted a few seconds though because it was completely just full of dirt on there and it broke the filament but it did light up after all those years so good job Sylvania here are some of the original wires that came out of the site just to show you how how much thought went into building these sites in your house you probably have what's called Romex they use solid coal, they use solid core wire all of these light fixtures were wired with stranded wire this is stranded machine wire and the reason you use stranded wire versus solid wire like in houses that stranded wire actually holds up to vibrations more than say Romex which is solid wire. These complexes were meant to withstand an immense pressure, earthquakes, nuclear blasts, natural disasters. So this is just one of those little details that's very important in these sites. 
Now back to the original picture that I restored. Here's how it looks like. Like I said, this is exactly how it would look like back when the Titan II sites were in operation. I actually looked at pictures of the Titan Missile Museum in Arizona and compared it to the light fixtures to make sure they used the right paint color and the right paint color for the cage. The light fixture in the wall would have looked like this back when the site was in operation. It had a gray body with a red cage. For the fixture, I used several layers of gray engine enamel. And for the cage, I use red engine enamel. And that's how you get that nice looking finish. Now what's special about these light fixtures is it has this little disc on it. This disc is what links it to the Titan II. If you look at it, it says WS107A-2. If you Google that string of characters, characters you'll find that it's the mili military designation for the Titan II. I actually had to drill off this, drill this rivet out and put a new rivet in when I sandblasted it just so I didn't damage it. I also repainted this black stripe in here because the paint was worn off. So that little plate is very important. That's what links it to the Titan II. Now if you're interested in having me restore your light fixture, maybe you bought one from Nick or if you have any other small automotive parts you'd like to have me restore, paint, test, sandblast or anything, feel free to email me at klaxonmechanics at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Take it away Nick.